I'm Jiaxing Zhang. Today, I present my work TECC, Towards Efficient Quick Tunneling via Collaborative Transmission Control. We are from Alibaba University of Chinese Academy of Science and the Purple Mountain Laboratories. So first, let's make a mass quick tunnel overview. What is mask? Mask stands for multiplexed application self-treat or quick encryption. It defines new tunneling mechanisms that can leverage quick to tunnel end-to-end -end UDP and IP packets. Our work mainly focuses on quick in quick pattern. Therefore, the client can send packets to the tunnel server through an encrypted quick tunnel. The tunnel server forwards the client's APP packets to the server and returns the response packets to the client. The first use case of quick tunnel is privacy protection such as Apple private relay. There's a quick tunnel between user device and relay. The man in the middle can only see client's IP address, the encrypted website name, as well as the new IP address and the website name. Therefore, the client's IP address and the website name cannot be linked. In Taobao, we mainly use quick tunnel to optimize transmission, especially for RPC. As well know, packet loss greatly impacts user experience, which is quite common on Wi-Fi and cellular networks. In order to reduce the time for packet loss recovery, we have deployed many tunnel servers at edge pole points. Users access RPC servers through tunnels. Therefore, there are tunnel connections and APP connections. Where tunnel connections can detect packet loss on Wi-Fi and cellular, and perform faster packet loss recovery. In MASK, there are many types of tunnels, which can be divided into two types based on whether they use stream or datagram transmission. Let's refer quick stream or quick datagram. First, let's look at the stream tunnel. Using a single tunnel to transmit, to transmit application connection packets can lead to the headline blocking problem. To alleviate the headline blocking problem, in MST, we use multiple streams to transmit a connection packet, which we refer to as a stream group, known as MSGT. However, experimental results have, have shown that MSGT still suffers from serious headline blocking problems. The other type of tunnel uses datagram to transmit application connection packets, which does not have the headline blocking problems because there is no dependency between different datagram frames in Quick. In MASK, there are two types of tunnels, MDT and RMDT, where RMDT can retransmit lost packets, that R refers to retransmission. To verify the impact of retransmissions on performance, we emulated a client to tunnel server link with a 2% packet loss and a tunnel server to server link. We transmitted files of different, different size, including 10 KB, 100 KB, 1 MB, 10 MB, and 30 MB to, com to compare the file completion time of different types of tunnels. We found that when the file size is small, retransmission results in significant benefits. We can see in the figure the 10 KB and the 100 KB. So retransmission leads to better performance. But retransmission, well, exacerbate congestion. When packet loss occurs, network is usually congested at this time if retransmission, if retransmitting packets may cause the network to become more congested, potentially leading to more packet loss. In our system, we use congestion control in the tunnel connection. Therefore, when retransmitting packets, packet siding will be restricted by congestion control thereby reducing the retransmission rate. We also validate this thought and different mobile network trees. Where the bandwidth change is very frequent, it can be seen that after using BBR in RMDT, the packet retransmission rate significantly decreased. But however, it is surprised that the use of congestion control does not seem to have a significant impact on the file completion time in some trees using BBR may even lead to longer completion time. So this is maybe due to the nested congestion control. 
when tunnel use congestion control, there will be two congestion controls. The congestion control of the tunnel connection and the congestion control of the end-to-end -end connection. We print the pacing rate of these two connections and the queue length of the tunnel connection in the left figure. We observe that at 24 seconds, the orange line of the tunnel connection in the left figure can perceive a decrease of bandwidth, while the blue line of the end-to-end -end connection does not show a significant decrease in bandwidth perception. This mismatch of congestion control results in a large accumulation of packet queue in the tunnel, causing the purple packet queue to grow, which also leads to a very large SRTT of the end-to-end -end connection. We can see in the red figure, SRTT is very big. So a good way to resolve nested congestion control is to synchronize the two states of congestion control. We choose to synchronize the congestion control states of tunnel connection to the end-to-end -end connection. Moreover, the control loop of the tunnel connection is shorter, and the, connection, and the congestion control detection is more accurate, which is especially suitable for frequent changing mobile networks. In TCC, the tunnel server can retransmit lost data packets and perform bandwidth probing. Tunnel server then transmit the connected network status to the client through the tunnel connection. The client consequently transfers the network status to the server via the end-to-end -end connection. Finally, the server calculate the sending rate based on the network status to the tunnel. The network status information may include the retransmission rate, RTT, queue length, sending rate, and other information. This figure describes a detailed process of feedback generation and, retrans and transmission. So it can go to the client and uh, to the server. After the feedback is completed, the most important thing is the server sending rate calculation, which is a key design of TECC. First, we model the server sending rate, which must be lower than tunnel sending rate because the tunnel server needs to both forward server packets and retransmit lost packets. Therefore, SRT is equal to UT multiplied TRT, where UT is greater than zero and less than one. Because the bandwidth change and there are delays in feedback, it is common that the tunnel server have a queue. The larger the queue length, the lower the server sending rate, and the smaller the queue length, the higher the server's sending rate should be. This is because the tunnel server needs to empty the packet queue. Therefore, SRT is equal to TRT minus QT divided by theta, where theta is a predefined time to clear the queue. When we prefer low latency, we can set theta to a smaller value while a larger value. In our experiments, we set theta to two-thirds of tunnel's RTT. The above obviously does not consider the queue accumulation caused by retransmission. To address this, we further revise the above sending rate calculation. SRT is equal to TRT minus QT plus delta RT TRT divided by theta that the delta RT is retransmission rate. So SRT is equal to UT multiplied TRT we can calculate the UT. But sometimes UT is too small and near zero, and the server cannot send packets at that time. For this, we impose a restriction that UT should be greater than one minus max PF. This completes a calculation of server sending rate. Max PF refers the maximum percentage of rate reduction. Then we conducted a detailed test and emulated network conditions. We used Mahi Mahi to emulate a network between the client and tunnel server, as well as a network between the tunnel server and server. Because the connection between the client and the tunnel server typically are in an unstable mobile network, we emulated bandwidth delay and packet loss risk. In subsequent experiments, we adjust these parameters for detailed tests. The link between the tunnel server and the server is usually a more stable one, 
so we only emulated latency using Mahi Mahi. Our comparison to TCC mainly includes MFT, which does not use a tunnel and forwards directly, MDT, which uses datagrams without retransmission in the tunnel, and RMDT, which uses datagrams in the tunnel but with retransmission. So first, we introduce a 2% packet loss rate between the client and the tunnel server and uh, transmitted files of different size. The results show that TCC can effectively reduce file transfer time, especially for short flows for about 10 KB and uh, 100 KB. 90-90% optimization is better. Then we change the delay between the client and the tunnel server to verify TCC's acceleration effect and the different delays. The results show that the lower the delay, the more benefits get. However, it was observed that there's still a good benefit at a delay of 15 microseconds. We also change the loss rate. The results show that the higher the packet loss rate, the better the performance, especially in 90-90% optimization. We compared the performance of TCC in different mobile network trees, and the results show that TCC has a good performance gain and a more performance gain at 90-90%. Uh, however, using a tunnel may incur some additional overhead, such as time for tunnel establishment, which may increase setup delay and extra bytes needed for tunnel in encapsulation. The results show that the setup delay increase no more than 2%, and the actual bias overhead is reduced as a follow size increase. We also validated the effectiveness of TCC in real-world A-B tests. We deployed tunnel servers in many pole points. Different users choose to choose the nearest pole point to establish a tunnel connection. Due to online develop deployment constraints, we implemented three types of solution, MDT, MST, and TCC. We considered MDT as a baseline because it's forward packets directly. And we recorded the improvements of MST and TCC compared to MDT. The results show that TCC has a great optimization effect with a 30% improvement in 99%. Finally, to summarize, we tested the performance improvement brought by the retransmission of QuickTunnel. Also, the performance can be affected due to the mismatch of transmission states caused by nested conjoint control. To address the issues caused by nested conjoint control, we, pro we propose a collaborative transmission control to synchronize the conjoint control state. In the end, we conducted detailed tests wherein emulated networks a performance improvement of 53% was achieved at 99%. In real-world network environments, a performance improvement of 13% was achieved at 99%. Thanks a lot.